So today we are going to start another method to solve linear programming problem that is simplex method. So before going to uh, see the deep concept and the procedure of simplex method and how to use that simplex method for our linear programming model and get the solution, we need to know some concepts which will be helpful to understand simplex method or to convert LPP into a standard form so that I can or so that we can apply this simplex method easily. OK, so based on that, the first topic which we are going to see is general form of LPP. Here we will see how the LPP looks like in general okay till now we have seen lpp uh, uh, for two variable three variable or more but if it has an m number of constraints n number of variables then how to write that what is the general form of lpp next thing is that we are going to see uh, canonical and standard forms of lpp what do you mean by canonical form of LPP? What do you mean by standard form of LPP? Why do we need that? So those things we are going to see under this section. Next is special example. Why it is special? Because apart from the canonical and standard usual forms, we have some different examples which we need to uh, think how we will solve. Okay. So few example problems I have taken. That's why I have named it as special. After that, some practice sets are there that you can uh, take and you can solve these problems and to get some confidence. OK, so let us start with the first one that is general form of LPP. So as we know that uh, a LPP, okay, linear programming problem. If we have n number of independent variables or n number of independent variables, nothing but here, here x1 to xn. So these are nothing but your variables, or it is said as decision variable. Okay. So if you have n number of decision variables and the objective function is this, so what do we have? find the unknown or x1, x2 up to xn which maximize or minimize the objective function this. So objective function z will be always a linear combination of x1, x2, xn vectors. Okay, and c1, c2, cn are the scalars or we can say constants. Clear? Now this subject to the constraints this. Now you have to see the how many constants are there 1 2 up to m because the first number you see a 1 1 second equation a 2 1 third fourth like that and last one is a m 1 and how many variables are there x 1 x 2 up to x n. So here we can say n variables. And m number of constants. And we know that those constants we have to convert into equality form to use graphical method. OK, but we are proceeding to another method that is simplex method. Why we are going to see that simplex method? Because in graphical method, there is a restriction that you can visualize the thing easily with by considering two variables, two decision variables. But if you have three or more number of variable, then what to do? So for that, we have a method that is simplex method. But before that, we will need to see few things to understand simplex method. So we have uh, M constants. So first one I'll read A11 X1 plus A12 X2 plus and so on plus A1N Xn less than equal to B1. So here, we have if we consider the maximization problem, you can see in general the inequalities will be less than type less than equal to. OK, and uh, generally if you have minimization problem, you will have greater than 
equal to type constants. Okay, and the next one is that uh, after having the m constants, another restriction is that the non-negativity restrictions. That is, whatever we have decision variables, that will be always greater than equal to zero. So whether it is a minimization problem or maximization problem, always we have this x1, x2, x3 decision variables or x1, x2, x3. These are the vectors greater than equal to zero. So this value should be zero. OK, so here whatever constants or whatever uh, notations we have used that we are going to see now the CJ. We are writing CJ because J running from 1 to N. So depending on the number of variable, your constant C, J also vary. The number of constants is equal to the number of variables. B, I. Why B, I am writing? Because B, I depends on the number of constants. So there are M constants. So M, B values. This right side value, you can see B1, B2, B3. So these all are the constants and aij is also a constant why aij aij a11 a12 a13 like am1 am2 amn those values are also are constant values so we cannot uh, like manipulate or we cannot change those value we can vary only the x1 x2 xn value okay so after getting the general form of lpp we will classify into two categories or, or we can make into two cases. So first case is that if the constant of the LPP are of the following type, you see. If the constants are of the following type means if the constants are in terms of less than equal to sign. Understand less than equal to sign and then the non-negative variable SI which satisfy this equation summation j equal to 1 to n a i j x j plus s i equal to b i are called the slack variables. So you see here the first one if I write very simple form if I write a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 this is less than equal to maybe b 1. Now what happens this is the left value okay which is less than equal to b 1. That means this value is if I uh, not include the equality, then what happens? It will be less than B, I, B1. So what we can do? We can add some value to this A11 X1 plus A12 X2 so that it will become B1. So what I can write A11 X1 plus A12 X2 plus S1 equal to B1. I can write like this. So S1, I can introduce another variable which will balance the equation, which will the which will balance the inequality to equation or which will transform the inequality to equality form. Understand what I'm saying? So we are adding that variable S i because i are the number of equations we have. So uh, if we have 10 number of constraints, so there will be 10 SI, means there are 10 slack variables. Understand? Now, second case is that if the constraints of the LPP means linear programming problem are of the following type, means greater than equal to form like summation j equal to 1 to n, aij xj is greater than equal to bi if we, that is the case for example if i simplify that thing and if i write in simple form a11 x1 plus a12 x2 is greater than equal to b1 now how to balance this thing you see the left side is more than the right side if i will not consider the equality case now what to do if I subtract some value from the left side, then it will be balanced with right side. So what I will write a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2. OK, plus I can add that variable 
that I can write S1 equal to D1. Clear what I am saying? Why I am adding? Uh, if I am adding plus, then S1 will be a negative. So sim uh, easily what we can do? We cannot add that. We can uh, use the notation this minus sign okay so here i can write minus so that it will be more appealing so uh, if the constants of the general lpp are of the following type that is greater than equal it form then the non-negative variable si which satisfy summation j from 1 to n a i j x j minus s i equal to b i where i runs from 1 to m are called the surplus variable because you are having more value in the left side so you are subtracting that that's why it is called surplus so surplus variable next thing is that we are going to see different forms are there or different forms of LPP are there that is canonical form, standard form. Then what we are going to see after knowing the canonical and standard form, we will convert that canonical form to standard form. Once we convert this canonical to standard form, then only we can apply or we can think of the simplex method. Okay, now first we will understand what is canonical form of LPP. So till now we have seen how to uh, write the general form of LPP, how to generalize the LPP. We have seen a few uh, example problems uh, using graphical method, we solve that also. Now we are going to see the canonical form, okay? So the general LPP is very often expressed in the following form. So here we have just taken maximize problem. We can use minimization also. I will tell over the time how it will be done. So the canonical form here, maximization type is there. Maximize Z equal to C1 X1 plus C2 X2 plus and so on plus Cn Xn. So how many variables are there? N variables are there. Subject to the constraints, this. A i1 x1 plus A i2 x2 plus and so on plus A i n x n less than equal to B i. So in single line we have written i equal to 1 to m means m constants because for i equal to 1 first constant we will get for i equal to 2 second constants like that we will get m constants. So we have written the m constants in very short way. Okay, this is a shorthand representation of uh, the m constants and the condition that non-negativity condition is x1 x2 up to xn greater than equal to 0. So this form if you see in this way the LPP is defined then that is called canonical form. Okay. So by doing some elementary transformations we can get that. Okay. The current form of the LPP is known as canonical form and it has of the following characteristics. So from this, what are the uh, things you are observing? First of all, we are observing that the objective function is a maximization type. All the constants are less than equal to type. Okay, all the variables x, i are non-negative. So this is the canonical form when maximization problem is given. So when minimization problem is given, then what happens instead of this less than equal to in the constraints, it will be greater than equal to sign. So you will get that. And whatever with the non-negativity condition, non-negativity condition will be always greater than equal to zero. Means non-negative. Understood? So then our observations will be what? Then that time the objective function will be a minimization type. All the constraints will be greater than equal to type and all the variables are non-negatives, that is xi. Now how to convert this canonical form to standard form? So by introducing the extra variable which will balance the constant. If, if we use extra variable, then we can balance this constant and 
we can convert this canonical form to a standard form. So we we'll see that. So the general form or general linear programming problem can also be written in the form this. So maximize z equal to c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus and so on plus cn xn. Again, n variables are there subject to the constants. This here, what you are seeing, you see a i1 x1 plus a i2 x2 plus and so on plus a i n xn equal to b i. So here equality sign is there or not. So in standard form, you will get equality sign. So whatever canonical form is there that you can convert to standard form, but while converting standard form, you have to see that or you have to ensure that your inequality will be equality or inequality will transform to equality form. So how it can be done like this way we have represented. So here a i 1 x 1 is there means i stands for m equations 1 to m i runs from 1 to m so there are m equations this is the compact form uh, in which we can represent all the m constraints with equality sign it is there and next one is the non negativity condition which will be obvious and it will be same for both canonical and standard form that is x1 x2 and all x n are greater than equal to zero. Now what we observe here, let us see the current form of LPP is known as standard form. OK, equality is there. That's why and it has the following characteristics. What the objective function is of a maximization type. All the constants are expressed as a as equation or equality. The right hand side of each constraint is non negative. The right hand side of each constraint is non negative. This will be a non negative value BI. So BI must be 0 or positive. All variables are non negatives. All variables means X1, X2, Xn are non negative. So instead of maximization, if we take minimization problem, so it will be minimize Z. And whatever it is there that it will be remain same subject to the constraints. So constraints also will be same and that will be in the equality form. Okay. So the only change is that in maximize we will have minimize of the problem. And apart from that the equality will be same. The BI value will be non negative. OK, all other things are same in the standard form for minimize problem. OK, I hope it is clear. If it is clear, then we will try to understand uh, in broad sense. OK, so when the problem is simple given I mean, mini maximize z equal to 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 5x3 like that. Uh, and the constants are there. It is very easy to do by adding slack variable or subtracting surplus variable we can convert it into what standard form but here you see the first question why it is special i'm telling because you see the first question is that maximize z equal to x1 plus 3x2 plus 5x3 subject to first constant is 7x1 minus 4x2 less than equal to 5 Second constant 5x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 greater than equal to 13. Third is 6x1 plus 4x3 is less than equal to 3. And the last is non negativity condition that is x1 comma x2 is greater than equal to 0. So what do you observe from this problem? Anything is missing. So if you observe if you see carefully this problem then in objective function there is a variable x3 but in non negativity condition there is no x3 where is x3 x3 is not there so if x3 is not there in the non negativity or non negative restrictions then what to do or what we conclude we conclude that x3 is unrestricted 
ओके मींस x1 एंड x2 आर रेस्ट्रिक्टेड बिकॉज़ x1 एंड x2 आर ग्रेटर देन इक्वल टू 0 बट x3 इज नॉट रेस्ट्रिक्टेड सो इफ x3 इज नॉट रेस्ट्रिक्टेड देन व्हाट टू डू वी हैव टू डिफाइन x3 इन डिफरेंट वे अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू सी इफ इन ओके दिस प्रॉब्लम वी हैव टू सी फर्स्ट सिंपल वे इफ फॉर एग्जांपल x3 ग्रेटर देन 0 इफ इट इज गिवन so if this is extra thing is given so what to do the first constant we can write 7x1 minus 4x2 plus s1 so that it will balance equal to 5 the constant okay then 5x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 minus s2 equal to 13 then 6x1 plus 4x3 okay minus s3 sorry plus s3 equal to 3 so this along with this we will have the standard form okay but the problem is that this x3 is not given so in this current problem x3 is not given if x3 is not given then we can tell x3 is unrestricted so if x3 is unrestricted then what to do we will use another two variables and we will represent x3 how we will do that let us see so that given lpp the variable x3 is unrestricted so we may take x3 as combination of another two variables so what we can take x3 as x3 dash minus x3 double dash so this is one variable this is another variable okay there are two variable we will take okay and we will write in this form so some book you can write it will be maybe uh, theta dash minus theta double dash will be given means x3 will be like this so the notation can be anything but you have to define properly so x3 we can write as x3 dash minus x3 double dash where x3 dash and x3 double dash should be greater than equal to 0 so we have to take two different variable like x3 dash and x3 double dash which will obey the non negativity condition and the linear combination in such a way that it will define x3 okay now if i take x3 same x3 then we will define how the constant will be defined so in place of x3 we will write x3 dash minus x3 double dash so the first constant was 7x1 minus 4x2 less than equal to 5 so it will be same remain and as it is because there is no x3 term the second one we had x3 term that is 5x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 was there so in place of x3 we are putting x3 dash minus x3 double dash so if you put and open it so you will get this one so 5x1 plus 2x2 plus 3 x3 dash minus 3 x3 double dash is greater than equal to 13 now third equation also we had x3 so third equation we had 6x1 plus 4x3 now x3 will be x3 dash minus x3 double dash so 6x1 plus 4x3 dash minus 4x3 double dash less than equal to 3 so this is the third constant and the non negativity condition will be what we will add two extra variable here so x1 comma x2 comma x3 dash comma x3 double dash greater than equal to 0 so instead of x1 x2 we will have now four variables greater than equal to 0 so now in this way we can change the constants but till now we have not got the standard form standard form we will get if the inequality will be converted into equality form or equations so that we are going to see so what to do in maximization uh, first what to do it can be converted into standard form by introducing the slack and surplus variable so the problem as maximize z equal to 2x1 plus 2x2 
plus 5x3. So in place of x3, we are putting x3 dash minus x3 double dash. So if we put and expand it, we will get 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 5x3 dash minus 5x3 double dash. Okay. Subject to this 7x1 minus 4x2 less than equal to 5 was there. So we are adding slack variable is 1 so that it will balance. Okay. Next second equation 5x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 dash minus 3x3 double dash. If this was greater than uh, 13. So what we are doing subtracting S2. Okay. So this S2 is your surplus variable. Now third equation similarly we have to do. So 6x1 plus 4x3 dash minus 4x3 double dash plus S3 equal to 3. That means here we are adding slack variable. And the last one will be what x1, x2, x3 dash, x3 double dash, s1, s2, s3 all are non-negative. Clear? So this is the final form or this is the standard form of the problem what we have. Next thing is that second problem we are seeing what is the uh, different difference is there. So express the following problem in standard form minimize z equal to 4x1 plus 5x2 okay clear subject to this 2x1 minus x2 minus 3x3 equal to minus 4 3x1 plus 4x2 plus x4 equal to 10 x1 minus 5x2 equal to 15 and non-negativity condition x1, x3, x4 are greater than equal to 0. So what do you observe here? First of all, we observe that in the optimization function or uh, in the function z, we have two variables only 4x1 plus 5x2. Okay. And in the constraint, we have all the equality constraints. So if the equality constraints are there, then we may it is standard form, but till now it is not standard form. Why we will see? Because you can see first one is that in the objective function, two variables are there. In the uh, constraint, we have another variable like first equation. We have 2x1 minus x2 minus 3x3. So this x3 is extra. So minus 3x3 equal to minus x4. So x, x3 is there in the constant but not in objective function. Second equation what we can observe 3x1 plus 4x2 plus x4 is there equal to 10. So x4 is also not present in objective function. Third equation we can see x1 minus 5x2 equal to 15. So there is no extra variable. Only we have x1 and x2 which are there in the objective function. So what are the two variable new variable we have x3 and x4. So those x3 and x4 we can consider as surplus or slack variable because it is in equality form. And the last non negativity condition you can see x1 is there x3 is there x4 is there but where is x2. So x2 is not there. If x2 is not there, that means there is no restriction for x2. So x2 is unrestricted. Then we know how to uh, take x2. x2 we can represent by using to another new variable. Okay, x2 dash, x2 double dash, and we will change that x2. We have x3, x4 as uh, the uh, surplus and slack variables. Then how to represent that we will see in the next. What we have discussed just now the current problem as x3 and x4 are the slack or surplus variables whereas x1 and x2 are the decision variables because x1 and x2 are there in the objective function. Now also the variable x2 is unrestricted. So we may consider x2 as x2 dash minus x2 double dash. So in that way we can change the 
a restriction means change the unrestricted x2 whereas x2 dash and x2 double dash will be greater than equal to zero now the problem was minimize so we can change this to maximize also we can write the problem in standard form as given below so when minimization problem is there you can convert into maximization type if you multiply minus 1 with the uh, objective function z so z dash we can write minus to demonstrate we can change the minimization problem to maximization problem okay i have done that if, if it is not asked nothing is needed then you don't need to uh, convert it to maximization problem so here one thing i can add you add to you that if we have a minimization problem okay but you know how to solve the problem in maximization way then you do one thing you multiply minus 1 and you can convert as you required as you know that way you can solve after that so we can maximize you just multiply minus 1 then we will get this thing okay as x2 is unrestricted that we can use this uh, x2 as x2 dash minus x2 double dash then we can solve now we can let us go to the question so here one thing is that the first equation we have minus sign at the right means bi value is minus 4 so if minus is there then it cannot be considered as standard form so when you are making into standard form it should be positive value or zero so what we will do multiply minus 1 both the side then it will become minus 2x1 plus x2 plus 3x3 okay equal to plus 4 so that we are going to see going to do in the first okay constant so minus 2x1 plus x2 in place of x2 we will have x2 dash minus x2 double dash plus 3x3 equal to 4 so first uh, constant is done second constant 3x1 plus 4x2 dash minus 4x2 double dash plus x4 equal to 10 here we had 4x2 so in place of x2 we use this form now third also you can find like x1 minus 5x2 dash plus 5x2 double dash equal to 15 and what are the uh, non negative restrictions we will have x1 x2 dash x2 double dash x3 x4 greater than equal to 0 okay clear as we don't have any uh, inequality okay we no need to add further uh, surplus or clack variables i hope uh, all the uh, two problems are clear to you if it is clear to you if you understood uh, properly then you can practice few problems okay i have uh, given five problems so you can uh, try from your end and if you are finding any difficulty let me know so next thing is that i will tell that lpp we can write the lpp or the canonical form into standard form then those standard form how it will be uh, developed in a proper form so that a proper procedure we can develop the simplex method so these are the references you can use so all these problems what we have taken we have taken from the reference 3 so that you can refer 